Muy buenos días, amados. Good morning, beloved friends and brethren present here in Azul, Argentina. It's a great blessing and a privilege for me to be with you, to share with you on this occasion some moments of fellowship around the Word of God and His program for this end time. And under the topic, the mystery, the mystery of the Word who was with God and is God for which I want us to read in St. John chapter 1 verses 1 and onwards where it says in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him and without Him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John, in other words, John the Baptist. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made fresh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. May God bless our souls with his word and allow us to understand it. You may be seated if you don't mind. The mystery of the word who was with God and was God and he continues being God. Uh, we will speak about the mystery of the word who was with God and was God. That's the mystery, the greatest mystery of the Bible. And when he became fresh 2,000 years ago, we knew him by the name of Jesus. And that was the mystery of the first coming of Christ. That was the coming of the Word who was with God and was God and he continues being God. And St. Paul tells us in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God, the Word, 
was manifested in flesh and was known by the name of Jesus who carried out the work of redemption on the cross of Calvary and now you see that he, you see the word became fresh we see that God came manifested in a human flesh 2000 years back in a veil of flesh called Jesus who was the veil of flesh the construction worker a simple man a carpenter of Nazareth but he had been born in Bethlehem of Judea since Mary was a descendant of King David and also Joseph since they were descendants of King David in that sense as which the, the king ordered to be carried out they all had to go to the city of their origin so therefore Joseph and Mary they had to go to Bethlehem of Judea because they are descendants David and Jesse they were from that place so you notice how Joseph and Mary were from the house of David from that family of David the, the royal family and for that reason they had to go to Bethlehem of Judea and since everything works for the God since the Messiah had to be born in Bethlehem of Judea they reached in a moment for him to be born and he was born where? in Bethlehem of Judea so all these promises which were appointed for the first coming of the Messiah, they had to be fulfilled in Jesus of Nazareth, and for that reason, he had to be identified as the true Messiah who had to come in that time to carry out the work of redemption on the cross of Calvary. So, how can it be possible that a man in whom all these pro uh, prophecies were fulfilled was rejected by the Hebrews? It, there was also a prophecy that spoke about the builders, in other words, the high priest and the religious leaders of the, of the religious council the, the Sanhedrin council being the spiritual builders among the Hebrew people uh, those who were in charge of that labor you notice the builders they rejected the Messiah they rejected the most important stone the stone of the corner the stone which the builders rejected became the cornerstone, it became the principal stone. Do you know the principal stone among the Hebrews? That's the Messiah, and they rejected that stone in his first coming. So, the builders, according to the prophecy, they are the ones who would reject that stone. In other words, they could not escape uh, those religious people could not escape that because even the prophecy spoke about that. So the Bible itself uh, pointed out, uh, pointed them to be like that. And when something is to happen, if it is prophesied that something will be rejected, something that God will send, uh, there will be people, there will be a nation who will reject the blessing of God and they would be uh, blind leaders who don't understand and they reject that blessing. In other words, they are not going to be leaders who will have a clear vision and a, and a clear understanding but leaders who would be short of divine revelation. They would only have an intellectual understanding of the word of God. But they would not have the divine revelation. And consequently, they are blind leaders. 
doesn't matter the degree of uh, intellectuality doesn't matter the doctrines of divinity which they have they still remain blind and you notice in the time of Jesus the high priest did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah and he rejected him he said that he had blasphemed when the high priest himself asked Jesus and said tell us plainly if you are the Christ why do you trouble our soul but why did he want Jesus Christ to say it so in order to condemn him and Jesus said I have told you and you don't believe from now on you will see the son of man seated on the right hand of God and when he told him all those things then instead of the high priest saying surely this is the son of God this is the son of God he said ah you have blasphemed hmm? this is blasphemy and he rent his his vestures and he was not supposed to to to, to rent his vestures and himself he violated the word of God and he also uh, violated the word of God by rejecting the Messiah. So you notice a man, a very intelligent man, a very wise man, the high priest, being blind to the fulfillment of the first coming of Christ, the high priest of the Hebrew religion, who is the one who, uh, the, the Hebrew people who had the promise of the first coming of Christ. So for the last day, for the second coming of Christ, it is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ which has the promise of the second coming of Christ. And the Hebrew people, they will see the second coming of Christ in the midst of the Gentile church. But the leaders, the great leaders of Christianity, will they realize it in this end time, the fulfillment of that promise, or they will be like those great religious leaders of the Hebrew people, including the high priest in, in their time, those who were blind to the first coming of Christ. Now, we are living in the end time, in the time in which just like 2,000 years back, when the word, the word who was God, who was with God and was God, was made fresh and dwelt among the Hebrew people, the veil of fresh called Jesus, a, a young construction worker, a simple carpenter of Nazareth. Now you notice, they did not uh, realize it then. We have the promise for the last day of the coming of the word. Again, in Revelation chapter 19, we have the promise of the coming of the word for the last day. And that is very important because in the last day, humanity will be living in a time parallel to how it was in the time of the first coming of Christ. Revelations 19, 11 and onwards it says, And I saw heaven open, and behold a white horse, and he that sat, that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness doeth judge and maketh war. His eyes were as frame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. This is the promise of the coming of the Lord for this end time. It is the promise of the coming of the Word who was with God and was God. It is the promise of the coming of the angel of the covenant, the angel of the Lord, coming in the last day. And now you see what the Reverend William Branham says on page 144 in the book of quotations in English talking, uh, talking about the White House Rider for the last day who will be on earth. 
On page 144, paragraph 1485, he says, Now I was getting pretty old, and I thought, Will I, will there be another revival? I will see another time. And just remember that from the west will come a white horse rider. From where? From the west. And the west is the American continent. And in the, in the northern part, there was already fulfilled the seventh edge for the program of the second coming of Christ. In the northern part of the west, in other words, in North America, and now only remains Central America, the South America, and the Caribbean for the coming of this white horse rider in the manifestation, in the final manifestation of Jesus Christ in the midst of his church. From the west will come a white horse rider. We will ride this trade again. This is right. Soon as you are about ready, it's a promise, you see. If it's a promise, it has to be in the Bible. And that is the promise of Revelation 19 of the coming of the white horse rider who comes and from his mouth comes a sharp-edged sword. And that's the one who comes in the last day that is the coming of the word in Revelation 19. That is the coming of the white horse rider coming from where? From the west. The west is the American continent and the, the central and the southern part of America and the Caribbean, that is the part where there was no edge, where the edges of the church were not fulfilled. And that is the part where the White House Rider will be manifested, where the word will be manifested in the last day. And why is is it in the West? Because Christ is constructing a spiritual temple, which is his church. And in the real temple, which uh, King Solomon constructed and the tabernacle that Moses built, the most important part was in the West. And that was the, the most holy place. And when Moses dedicated the tabernacle, just like in the time uh, ahead, when Solomon dedicated the temple to God, the presence of God entered in the temple, and later it, the presence of God entered the most holy place and entered on the ark of the of the covenant on the master seat because in the most holy place there was the temple of the throne of God the master seat upon the ark of the testament that there was the presence of God and from there God spoke to the prophet Moses all the, all the things which God wanted Moses to speak to the people and that is the most important part in the temple. There was the word who was with God and was God, was God manifested there in that pillar of fire. And now, in the spiritual temple of Christ, God has been constructing that temple. Christ has been constructing that temple which began in the Middle East in the land of Israel and he has been constructing his temple. We have the most holy place from the time of the apostles up to here being constructed with the living stones, with human beings who have believed Christ as their Savior and they have washed their sins in the blood of Christ and they have received His Holy Spirit and they have been born in the house of God. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the spiritual temple which Christ is constructing 
And we have had the seven stages of the seven church ages of the Gentile church, which correspond to the, to the holy place of this spiritual temple. And now Christ moves to the Latin American and Caribbean to call and gather his erects and construct with them the most holy place of his spiritual temple. Uh, where the word carries out that work and that is where the white horse rider of Revelation 19 will be manifested in the last day let us read let's see what the second the forerunner of the second coming of Christ says in relation to that white horse rider on page 303 in the series book in English it says but when our Lord appears here on earth he will be riding on a snow white horse and he will be completely fully the Emmanuel the word of God incarnate in a man, the word coming manifested in the human flesh in the last day, and that will be the coming of the white horse rider of Revelation 19. And he will bring us the blessings of God. That is why the church finding herself in this time in the age of the cornerstone which is the golden age the age of the most holy place of the spiritual temple of Christ she will find herself in the stage of the west the church will find herself in the stage that corresponds last to the Latin America and the Caribbean just like the church in her beginning she was in the stage that corresponded to the land of Israel and later she went to the stage in Asia Minor and let alone it passed through five stages in Europe and let alone it entered the, the, the seventh stage in North America and now it passes to the edge of the cornerstone in Latin America and the Caribbean. That is the program which Christ is carrying out in the construction of his temple, of his spiritual temple, the temple which is composed of human beings, believers in Christ, who have washed their sins in the blood of Christ and they have received his Holy Spirit. And in that way, they have been born in the house of God, in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is his spiritual temple. And now, we can see that Christ is creating, he is making a house for the dwelling of God in all his fullness, a temple for God. And that same house is the, is the house of David. Because God would rise for, uh, for the would raise a house for the descendants of David. And that house is the mystical body of Christ which comes through Jesus Christ. And according to the flesh, it's that it descends from David. And from this lineage of the son of David, Jesus Christ, uh, there comes the kings and priests who will reign with Christ for the millennium and for the whole of eternity. The son of David, Solomon, according to the flesh, he represented Jesus Christ. And now, through Jesus Christ, comes the kings and priests who will reign with Christ during the millennium and for all eternity. And Christ is the heir as the son of David to the throne of David. The archangel Gabriel, when he appeared to the Virgin Mary, he told her that she would have a son who would be the son, the, the son of the Most High, and, the, and God would give him the throne of his father, David, and he would reign forever. And Jesus Christ, and for us we came from Jesus Christ through the new birth. 
in other words uh, that house of david or the lineage of david that is the church of the lord jesus christ which comes through our beloved lord jesus christ and you notice in revelation chapter 5 verses 8 and onwards it says and when he had taken the book and the four beasts and the four and twenty elders fell down fell down before the lamb having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors which are the prayers of the saints and they sang a new song saying thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hast made unto us our God, and has made us unto our God kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. Now you notice those who have been made kings and priests, and who will reign on earth. Those are the ones who have been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ, our Savior. In Revelation chapter 20, verse 4, up to 6, he says, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is, is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. Now, we can see what Christ is doing. He is making a house. That is the house of God, the spiritual temple of God, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they are kings and priests, they are heirs of God and co with our beloved Lord Jesus Christ, to everything that Christ is a heir, uh, also those who are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ are heirs too. And since Christ is the heir to the throne of David, we are also co-heirs with him. That is why we shall reign with Christ on this planet earth during the millennium. And all the things of the earthly kingdom which will be on this planet earth will be directed governed by Christ and his children by Christ and his church so you notice we are kings and priests in other words that in, in, in the political all the political system will be under the guidance and the dominion and the governance of Christ and his church. In more clear words, for Christ and us. And since we are made priests, also everything that has to do with our religious matters will be under the direction and the governorship of Christ and his church, Christ and us. And the earth will be filled with the glory of God as the, the sea is covered with water. And that revelation is the revelation of those who are redeemed by the blood of Christ, which they will have in the last day about the second coming of Christ. All that revelation of the second coming of Christ will be given, will be made known to all the inhabitants, will be in the millennium king, in the millennial kingdom, just like the revelation of the first coming of Christ has been given uh, in, throughout these 2,000 years which, has, which have transpired from Christ up to now. So, now we can see the reason as to why 
He comes in this end time, the word who was with God and was God and will be God forever. We can see why he comes with a white horse rider of Revelation 19 in this end time. It is because he is going to carry out the reclaiming work. And under that work of reclaiming, the dead in Christ will resurrect in eternal bodies, and us who are living, we will be transformed. And now, the mystery of the coming of the word 2,000 years back, you see, that was the coming of the angel of the covenant, the angel of the Lord coming in human flesh, who was created in the womb of Mary, where God created a cell and it multiplied one cell upon another, and they formed a body, and thus the body of Jesus was formed. It required a body created by God, because everybody that would be born on this planet Earth would be born already contaminated with sin and the, the blood of the animals which were offered to God could not take away sin. Only they could only cover them. So therefore, the fullness of God, the fullness of divinity could not be manifested in a human being. The angel of the covenant could not be made fresh in all his fullness in a human being because they were all contaminated with sin. And even if they were offering to God sacrifices of sin, the blood of those animals would only cover the sin, but the sin would be there, though covered, before the eyes of God. If for that time uh, the blood of some animal could have taken away sin, well, the angel of the covenant would have come in all his fullness in a man, in a man who had no sin, but would be free, would be cleansed of all sin, without having his sins covered, but totally cleaned, cleaned of all sin by the blood of one of those sacrifices. But since there could not be found any person like that, it required the creation of a body in which the fullness would come, to the angel of the Lord, the angel of the covenant, and that's how it was. God created that body in the womb of Mary, of Mary who was born in Bethlehem of Judea, and later God was in that body in all his fullness. It was the manifestation of divinity in the human flesh, the manifestation of the word made flesh, the manifestation of the angel of the covenant, the angel of the Lord who was with God and was God, manifested in a human being, dressed in a veil of flesh, of human flesh to carry out the work of redemption on the cross of Calvary. For the time of the sacrifice of Christ, the sins of those who had departed but had offered sacrifices of little animals to God, their sins were removed with the blood of Christ. And that is why they could be able to resurrect with Christ when he resurrected. And from the day of Pentecost until now, uh, from the day of Pentecost and onwards, God has been creating a new race, which through believing Christ as your Savior and you wash your sins in the blood of Christ and you receive his Holy Spirit, you remain justified as if you have never sinned. And God can manifest himself in all his fullness in the time in which he has programmed to be manifested in one of his redeemed, in one of his redeemed ones, uh, the one redeemed by the, the, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ to fulfill every promise that he has made for his people. And for the end time, 
we find that the angel of the Lord, the angel of the covenant, who is God himself, with his theophanic body, just like he was manifested through the messengers of each age, St. Paul and other messengers, the Reverend William Branham, who was the seventh messenger, the Holy Spirit was manifested in them, the angel of the covenant, but in all, not in all fullness. And we find that he spoke through them, he spoke to the people in the dispensation of grace. And for the last day, for the age of the cornerstone, the angel of the covenant, the angel of the Lord, who is Jesus Christ himself in and with his theophanic body, he will be manifested through his angel messenger and he will make known to us all these things which should happen soon. He will come manifested, the angel of the covenant in the human flesh in his angel messenger of the last day, just like he was manifested in human flesh in the seven angel messengers of the seven church ages of the Gentile church. He was manifested in the portion of Responding to each age and for the last day he will be manifested in his angel messenger in the portion promised for the last day. He will be manifested in all his fullness. But this will begin in a progressive way. And when Jesus Christ has used his angel messenger in everything that is planned for this end time, and the elects of God have been called and gathered. Later, Jesus Christ will adopt his angel messenger, and there, Jesus Christ in Holy Spirit will be manifested in all his fullness. And he will be speaking through his angel messenger in all his fullness, and he will be doing things which in the past uh, in the past we are only seen in Jesus and in his prophets but all that already passed all that is already history and all that is type and figure of what God will do what the end of the covenant will do in this end time he also gave us an example through each angel messenger and even through the Reverend William Branham. He showed us uh, great things about how the ministry of the angel of the covenant will be, the word, through the human flesh in his angel messenger. He gave us uh, an example through the Reverend William Branham and in that way he prepared the way for all that the angel of the covenant, the angel of the Lord will do in his final manifestation through his angel messenger. Now the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ is not the Lord Jesus Christ. For him, he is only a man redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ who will be living in this end time in the midst of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he will be the instrument of Jesus Christ for Christ through his angel to speak to his church and make known to her all these things which should happen soon and in that way call and gather his elects in this end time. And through his angel messenger, Christ will be fulfilling all that he has promised. He said, come up hither and I will show you the things which should happen hereafter. And now through his angel messenger, his sent one, he makes known all these things. The Lord God of the of the spirits of prophets has sent his angel to manifest to show his servants the things which should happen soon. In other words, the things which should happen soon. You notice how through his angel messenger, Christ in Holy Spirit will manifest himself through a man because he has always used a man to manifest himself through him and to speak to his people.
That is the divine order because the Lord God will do nothing save He reveals His secrets to His servants, the prophets. He will always have a man through whom He manifests Himself. And now, the, re- the divine revelation of the word, the angel of the covenant, the angel of the Lord, Jesus Christ in the Holy Spirit through his angel messenger, that is the ministry, that is the mystery which the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ has to bring. He comes with the revelation of Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ will be revealing himself through his angel messenger in this end time. So therefore, the revelation of this mystery, the revelation of the mystery of the word coming in the last day upon a white horse rider as white as snow, that's the mystery of the coming of the angel of the covenant manifested in human flesh in his angel messenger. But remember that his angel messenger is not the Lord Jesus Christ he is only the instrument of Jesus Christ for this end time. So later, after they are called and gathered, all the erects and the number of the erects is finished, and then the number of the church of Jesus Christ is done, is finished, later, Christ will resurrect the dead believers in him and he will transform us who are living. And then, we will all be ready in the new body and there will be a full manifestation of the Holy Spirit, a full manifestation of God in the angel of the Lord Jesus Christ and consequently in the mystical body of Christ through that ministry which will be operating, which Christ will be operating, the angel of the covenant in the midst of his church. And that is the mystery of the last day which will be revealed to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ and will give her the faith, the revelation to be transformed and carried to the marriage supper of the Lamb. That is the mystery which the church of the Lord Jesus Christ will obtain, revealed to her in this end time. Those one, the, the ones who are going to be transformed and raptured, they need to have the revelation of the mystery of the coming of the word, the coming of the white, of the white horse rider, Revelation 19. And the forerunner of the second coming of Christ said that that would be the coming of the word. The word incarnate in a man. Did you see how simple is the mystery of the, of the word who was with God and was God? It was simple 2,000 years back in his coming and in his manifestation in human flesh. In that young construction worker called Jesus, and it will be simple in this end time, the coming of the word, the coming of the angel of the covenant, the angel of the Lord manifested in his angel messenger in the last day. That is why John the Apostle wanted to worship him, but the angel told him not to do it, he told him to worship God. The angel of Jesus Christ is not Jesus Christ, though through his angel, the word, the angel of the covenant, Jesus Christ in Holy Spirit, will be my manifested in his angel messenger in the human flesh. You see how everything is simple. So everything always begins in a simple way and later it goes on passing through different stages until Jesus Christ adopts his angel messenger and consequently there will come the adoption of all the sons and daughters of God in this end time of those who departed and we who are living. Now we can see the mystery of the word who was with God and was God. The one who was made fresh 2,000 years back in Jesus 
of Nazareth and in this end time it will be made fresh the word made fresh would be manifested in, in human flesh in his angel messenger that is the mystery of the coming of the word for the last day and when we are already with the new body already transformed then we will see our beloved Lord Jesus Christ in his glorified body because we also have a glorified body but before that we will see the coming of the word manifested in human flesh in his angel messenger we will see the manifestation of Jesus Christ the age of the covenant through his angel messenger calling and gathering his elect and in that way sounding the final trumpet or the great voice of trumpet which is the voice of Christ speaking to his people to his church in this end time and calling us and gathering us and preparing us to be transformed and raptured in other words to be uh, taken to heaven uh, caught up in heaven caught up to heaven to the marriage supper of the Lamb it's been a great privilege for me to be with you giving you the testimony of the mystery of the word who was with God and is God he was with God and he was God and he will continue being God and he continues being God because the angel of the covenant the angel of the Lord because he's the angel of the covenant, the angel of the Lord. May the blessings of Jesus Christ, the angel of the covenant, the word be upon all of you and upon me too. And soon may he complete the number of his erects, the erects of God, and soon we'll be transformed and we are, we, we are taken to the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven in the eternal name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Well, we have seen this mystery of the word who was with God and was God, the one who created heavens and the earth, who was Jesus Christ in his theophanic body, and later he was made fresh and dwelt among the Hebrew people, and for the last day, Jesus Christ with his, with his theophanic body he will come to his church manifested in the midst of his church and he will be manifested through his angel messenger making known to us all these things which should happen soon and later he will adopt his angel messenger and when his angel messenger is adopted from there and on there will, all, will only remain uh, 30 to 40 days, maybe, uh, a short time, a very short time, but in that short time, God will shake the entire world. Well, let's leave that quiet as the number of the erects is being finished and later we will see the adoption which Christ will do with his angel and also he will adopt the erects who will be living in this time just like he will adopt the erects who departed who will, by resurrecting them in eternal bodies. May God bless you and may God keep you all.